The five P's. Proper prevention. <laughs> I already f***ed it up. Hi. I have a quick question. Okay. What are those five P's again? Proper planning prevents poor performance. What's going on everybody and welcome to the channel. All right, so today's video, I think it's episode two in the new Powerwall 2.0 series videos. All right, so the five Ps, proper planning prevents poor performance. That's basically what we're gonna be doing today, although it's probably not proper planning, it's probably gonna be piss poor planning, but we're going to attempt proper planning. So in this video, all I plan to do is show you the plan, show you the vision that I have for the Powerwall area over there. And then I'm also going to show you and go over all the parts that I bought pretty much like a year and a half ago. Like I said before, I wanted to start this project forever ago and I just wasn't able to do it, but that's what we're doing now. So I guess we will start with all the crap that I bought last year. All right, so here's quite a few of the parts that I bought last year in preparation for the new power wall that's gonna go over there. So I was just gonna run through most of these real quick. So we're gonna start with the cabinet right here. All right, so the box right here, this is a Hammond Eclipse and it's NEMA 4. The dimensions are 24 by 30 by eight. This one also has the little locking feature so you can lock the cabinet up. And this one also has the little rubber seal that goes around the door. I don't remember what the page said this box was technically for, but it's kind of like a, a weatherproof box. Anyway, all right, so this is pretty much what the new power wall is gonna look like. Again, none of this is final or anything like that. Nothing is permanently mounted, except for the little shelf that I put in here. I will probably switch out the bolts in here for some maybe grade eight or strong bolts because these bolts probably aren't strong enough to hold the weight of the batteries. Well, I mean, they have been for the last year, but you know, just in case. They're just some random carriage bolts that I had on hand. And yes, I did make the shelf out of some square tubing that I had just laying around, as you can see the little holes in there. Uh, anyway, I do have some more for the next box. And one other thing I'll have to do in here is put something over this gaping hole in here, just in case the cells wanna fall through. Hey you, what are you doing? Uh, one other thing somebody did mention is putting a cover on these cells, which I will do just in case the shelf or whatever broke. Another reason why I wanna change the bolts. I'll probably put plexiglass or something, you know, over the cells so nothing can be shorted out. Probably bottom and top cells. The cells that are in here right now are the 272 amp hour lichen or lichen cells. And in between the cells for insulators, I bought some of that fish paper. Basically, I got a big roll and just cut it up into roughly the same size as the battery. This is gonna be my insulator, just in case for some reason there happens to be like a chafe or something in the blue insulation or this blue plastic wrap stuff, PVC, vinyl, whatever the stuff is. You know, there's no short in between each cell. So that is the insulator right there. And then for my compression plates over here on the side, I'm not gonna really like compress them or anything. It's just to hold things together. Uh, these are phenolic. I got this off of eBay, and then I cut some holes in there for my threaded rod. All right, so that's what's gonna go on there. On the other side is pretty much the same thing, but instead of using nuts, I went with these little, I don't remember what these are called offhand, but they're basically threaded nuts that you kind of press in there. Uh, yeah, that's what I did on the other side. That goes over here on this side. Oh, hey there, buddy. Here's Horace, you finally came down to help me. Nice. And then right over here, I have my Class T fuse. This is a little fuse, part number is JLLN 
400A-P. I probably could have gone a little less on the fuse, but 400 will work just fine. In this box, we have the second Hoffman enclosure. It's pretty much identical to that one. This one's gonna be for the other batteries that are sitting right up here on my workbench. Right over here, which is the other way, but doesn't really matter. This is just basically an enclosure or a junction box. It's 18 by 18. My plan for this was to put the shunt trip breaker roughly over here and then put my solar fuses and surge suppression right over here. Then inside the box, possibly putting in some bus bars so I can connect all the batteries together. That is to be determined. So it's basically for the shunt chip breaker and all the solar fuses and circuit breakers and surge suppression. Now inside this bag right here, it's basically a bunch of odds and ends, uh, conduit and all that kind of stuff, because I would like to put conduit to go in between all the battery boxes and to this box right here, and then conduit over to the inverter if I can. All right, so that's basically what's in this bag right here. I do have my all thread cut, at least for that box over there. I don't have anything done for this box, so we will definitely be putting this box together in one of the videos. I didn't buy this. I got this out of a dumpster from a previous job that I had, and I've had that in my garage for about well, since 2012. <laughs> so, free all thread for this project. I'm glad I kept it. In this box over here, oh, I've got another fuse, another Class T fuse for the second box. It's the exact same thing. And then in here, I have some 2 aught wire in here. This is Southwire Royal Exilene 2 aught or 62 millimeter square welding cable. And this is going to be the wire that I use from the batteries over to the inverter and all that kind of stuff. I got red and black. I don't remember how many feet I got. Hopefully I have enough. I guess whenever we start putting all this stuff together, we will find out. All right, so there you go. There's a good portion of the parts that we're going to be using to build the Powerwall 2.0. And like I said before, I did buy most of this stuff over a year ago. I'm definitely going to be needing more parts. We're just not sure what we're going to need quite yet. Alrighty, so over here in the power wall area, I was gonna kinda give you my thought process and my vision of how I want this all to look. First things first is the Rhino battery. I am going to incorporate that into the new power wall. And basically I'm gonna move that and put it on this wall over here because there's not gonna be enough room on this back wall anyway. The gray Hammond boxes that are over there with the batteries in it, uh, I did make a little cardboard cutout that we could kind of set up here. What I'm thinking is one gray box is going to be roughly right here. And then I'm going to put another one, you know, somewhere right about there. And then again, if I ever get crazy, I'll put the third one, you know, like right over here. And then if I get super nutso, I could technically put two more right over here, you know, starting right up there and right down there. I don't see that happening, but I'm not gonna say never. And then obviously for this little tiny plastic box that's holding my solar and stuff in it right now, that stuff's gonna come out. And then that smaller box, the 18 by 18, that's gonna be sitting up here, you know, somewhere. And then all the wires and stuff can go inside of that. And then once I do get more solar, cause I'm definitely gonna need it, I'll have to use one or both of those PCM 60X charge controllers. I guess depending on where I put that 18 inch square box, you know, I might be able to put the PCM 60Xs up here on top. And at least at this time, I do plan on putting the plastic conduit in between each box. So, you know, there's gonna be a pretty big piece of conduit right here. If I have a third battery, you know, a piece in between and then a piece of conduit going from this battery box over to the solar box, all right? And then out of the solar box, we're gonna come down and wrap around just like I am right now and going into the inverter. And then there's one other thing that I always forget about is venting. Since those boxes are kind of sealed to a point, even though I'm gonna have holes in them and conduit going to other boxes, I still would like to have a vent. Basically go through conduit, come up over the inverter, and I'll just vent it right outside, just in case there's some sort of emergency issue and there's a problem with one of the batteries. It can at least vent most of the smoke or whatever it vents outside. Not saying it's all going to go out there, but hopefully most of it will go out there. So that's one other thing that I would like to incorporate if I can. All right, so we're going to get a little closer to the wall here. So my original idea was to put the boxes 
and mount them directly on the wall. You know, drill holes into the concrete block or wherever I can. However, it's kind of hard to see, but these walls are not like, eh, it doesn't show very well. These walls are not perfectly flat, so I don't think I would be able to get the box flat on the wall. So the other option is to do two pieces of Unistrut up and down the wall so I can mount the boxes directly to that. The only thing that I'm not a fan of is it'll bring the boxes out away from the wall, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half, depending on which Unistrut I get. I don't know, something to think about. All right, so for this solar box, I was gonna run over with you real quick. All right, so this was kind of the idea of what I was thinking. I obviously have the shunt trip breaker right here, have my solar fuses, surge suppression, and circuit breakers up in this area, and then right down here have these bus bars, you know, for the, all the batteries and stuff to kind of parallel to before it goes through the shunt trip breaker. Uh, solar is going to go through the shunt trip breaker as well, but I don't know if I'm going to have enough room in this box. I might have to get a bigger box so I can fit all this stuff in. I just don't know because I'm going to reuse the Batrium BMS, obviously, and I'm not sure where I'm going to put that yet. So this kind of goes inside with the piss poor planning. Any thoughts you guys might have on some of this stuff? Should I get a bigger box or possibly move the Batrium to a different spot? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Later on, if I turn these around and I add more solar, you know, and add the PCM 60Xs, I might need more circuit breaker and fuse area. I guess this is gonna have to wait, even though I'm not technically even remotely close to putting all this stuff together yet. But I don't know, let me know what you guys' thoughts are on the solar box here. That was the idea, but it kind of looks like I might need a little bit bigger of a box which I was hoping I wouldn't have to because these boxes are kind of expensive. Alrighty, there you go. That is my vision or my plan. I don't know if it technically goes with the five Ps, but we're gonna assume that it did. All right, so if there's anything that you guys think that I'm forgetting, Obviously, I don't have all the parts that I'm gonna need for the new power wall. I'm not exactly sure all the things that I'm gonna need, at least at this point. Uh, some of the stuff we'll just have to get on the way. So one of the things I do need help on from you guys is, do I use the all strut, you know, to go up across the wall so I can mount the boxes directly to that? Or should I just mount the boxes directly to the wall? I guess what I could do to get around some of the visual lines going up and down is maybe just paint the Unistrat white. That's the only thing I could come up with. Anyway, that's all I got. Make sure you guys put all your suggestions and stuff down in the comment section. Don't forget to like that smash button and I will see you on the build in the next video. Uh, 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 uh. What are you doing out there? Horace. What are you doing out there? I don't know. How'd you get out there? You went in? Or sister? Out there somewhere? Not sure. You gonna stay out there? All right. <laughs>